2009 was a special year for SpongeBob SquarePants. Many might remember it as marking the 10-year anniversary of the show. This was signified by the release of Truth or Square, a special episode that aired in November, but nobody missed the opportunity to celebrate this year. On Nick.com, two companies were hard at work releasing a SpongeBob Flash game every week. These were This Is Pop and Workin' Man. This Is Pop had solidified itself as a notable company with Atlantis Squarepantis Square Off, a massive installment to the Nick Arcade. But this was a breakout year for Workin' Man. With little to their SpongeBob repertoire apart from a simple Krabby Patty catching game, this was their chance to really show what they could do. Now this selection of weekly Flash games was originally called the SpongeBob New 52. Wait, you mean like DC? But actually, there were 55 of them. Two weren't even created by This Is Pop or Workin' Man, but we'll get to those. And these weren't the only games that came out in 2009, but honestly, there were so many that we'll cover those in a sequel video. You could recognize the ones that were made for the 10-year anniversary by looking at this certificate that appeared at the end of them. They were also fairly short, but some were surprisingly detailed. So let's check out the 55 anniversary games. Let's start with a few put out by This Is Pop. This one is very simple. It's called Belly Bounce. Now even if the games are basic, there's one thing This Is Pop never fails to do, and that's to give the games incredible music. But all you do is move Patrick through the water and bounce Spongebob off your belly to catch Krabby Patties and avoid jellyfish. I guess Patrick learned to swim sometime after SpongeGuard on duty. He was only pretending to need those freezy fruits in battle for Bikini Bottom. Not much to it, but it's amusing. Another Patrick-themed one is Bubble Blower. Just look at all this gum. No wonder Patrick can pass as a giant pile of bubble gum. He lives among it. So he's blowing a bubble and flying up into the endless sky. You move a little fan around and try to keep him afloat while collecting more bubble gum and avoiding hooks. You're being timed and every gumball you collect gives you more time. They also increase your score. These golden ones will give you 10 points rather than 1. I also love Patrick's face whenever he falls. He's horrified when facing his demise. The music's great in this one, too. makes you feel like you're doing something way more awesome than flying in the air with a bubblegum bubble. It may take you a moment to get the hang of the fan, but you'll figure it out quickly enough. I like this one. Up next, we have Capture Craze with the best music so far. You run around and click to catch jellyfish in your net. It gets big if you catch the gold ones, then you can catch more from farther away. Whoa, look out, SpongeBob. You're gonna depopulate jellyfish fields if you keep this up. So now we have Cavity Crisis. Wait, wait, don't walk away. I swear this isn't like those Elsa Gate SpongeBob dentist games. Though I'll admit, I was a little nervous going into it. This is Pop has made some weird stuff before. Thankfully, this one's extremely tame compared to those. SpongeBob's teeth are rotting at a rapid rate, and you have to brush every tooth individually to keep it from turning yellow and falling out. Wow, what a curse. This sponge can't go a second without brushing his teeth. As soon as he stops, they start to rot. What did he do to make them decay this rapidly? The stages are denoted by days passing, so that means this is a cruel twist of fate. A serious condition he has to have checked out. But I can't imagine he has good dental insurance from the Krusty Krab. You also have to catch candy because it'll practically destroy a tooth if it hits one. Thankfully, even if a tooth is almost fully decayed, you can fix it by brushing it. Imagine if it was that easy in real life. I see SpongeBob's curse has a flip side. His teeth may rapidly decay, but he does possess the brush that can instantly fix them. I want to know where he does his shopping. But oddly enough, this is really fun. I actually enjoy this game. It's kind of satisfying in a strange sort of way. But playing it really makes me want to get up and brush my teeth in real life. I don't want them to decay at a rapid rate. So let's move on. Here's Deep Sea Leap. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Okay then, guess we won't be giving it a try. You have to coordinate SpongeBob at just the right angle to jump on this series of platforms. And watch out for jellyfish. This really reminds me of the frustrating Mermelayer section from the PC Battle for Bikini Bottom. And listen to SpongeBob's voice when he falls. 
It's hard to get the hang of, but once you do, it's amusing to play for a couple minutes. See how high of a score you can get. Now here's Fry Cook Flip Out. You're flipping Krabby Patties and waiting for them to turn the right color. When they glow yellow, you flip them. When they go blue, you click them and drag them to a bun. It's really easy, even when you start getting a bunch at once. At least Patrick isn't here to eat them this time. But yeah, not much to it. So let's look at a popular one. This wasn't released by This Is Pop, but actually Workin' Man. This year, they were really determined to show their potential. So here's Love Hurts, based on the Valentine's Day special. I'm sure many people remember the music. Like in the episode, Patrick is angry because Spongebob supposedly didn't get him anything for Valentine's Day. So he's transformed into a giant monster somehow and you have to run away from him. You avoid balloons and collect chocolate to throw at him to make him stop for a moment. Where did all this anti-gravity chocolate come from anyway? Uh, that's what do, that's what do, at the f end of that. Sandy's also flying nearby in her chocolate balloon. Sometimes she comes to the forefront and the game tells you to crash her balloon into Patrick for bonus points. You do this by throwing chocolate at it and making it burst. Surprised that isn't enough to turn him back to normal. It's also really funny to watch your sprite flatten when Patrick steps on you. This is a lot of fun, and I understand why so many people like it. But this wasn't the only great game Workin' Man released. Another popular one is Dancin' Tentacles. This was inspired by a classic episode, Culture Shock. In this, Squidward is dancing at the Krusty Krab talent show, but people are throwing food at him, so it's up to you to block it. Check out the intro to this. <laughs> I wish people respected cleanup crews that much in real life. I like that the instructions are modeled after a playbill, but look at the credits here. Squidward as awful. Not even a proper character name, just awful. So you move from side to side, jumping in front of the stage to catch Krabby Patty ingredients. You can construct them and throw them to appease the crowd. Apparently Plankton's the director too. Whenever you miss an ingredient, this cane inches further onto the screen. Throwing patties will make it back away. You lose if it's able to reach Squidward. Sometimes Mr. Krabs will hand you a goo thing that's supposed to be special sauce, and this will give you a boost. Is that the Krabby Patty formula? Watch out, Plankton. It's made with your relatives. But I really like the attention that went to designing everything and making it look all theatrical. The music sets the tone, too. <laughs> This one's really good. So let's keep up the working man momentum with Decorating Dilemma. This one's supposed to be more soothing. Even the music gives that impression. Reminds me of the Wild Tangent Symphony games. Sorry, that's way too much nostalgia for me. But why does Patrick look so evil here? So I'll admit, I didn't really get the instructions at first. Because of this, I messed up a good few times before I got the hang of how it worked. You have to glue wallpaper down by watching the side of the screen for a pattern. When you see a pattern in the same spot as it is on the side, you click to glue it down. Even if you mess up, a glued wallpaper is locked in place for the rest of the round. The amount you get correct determines if you get a bonus or not. It's really relaxing once you know what you're doing. It's alright. So let's do one that's not relaxing in the slightest. Deep Sea Surgeon was one of my favorites, but goodness, does Patrick really have to look so intimidating here? The music to this is also extremely nostalgic. So Spongebob is unwell and Patrick is his doctor. This might have drawn inspiration from the episode Suds. And no wonder Spongebob's not feeling good, he has whole anchors inside him. So you drag the mouse through mazes to reach certain items and take them out through his pores. But if you hit a wall... And the more you mess up, the sicker Spongebob gets, reflected by his appearance. It can get challenging, but never too bad. It can also be funny to see all the strange stuff Spongebob's eaten. I really like this one. So next up we have Dutchman's Deck Dash of Doom. Apparently the Flying Dutchman ship is the longest boat in existence because Spongebob and Patrick are sliding across it after stealing his treasure. You have to jump over, duck underneath, or go around boxes that sit in your way. Oh hey Sandy, no chocolate balloon this time? It's pretty simple. I also like how Spongebob crushes himself with the treasure whenever he ducks. 
But now let's look at some games that were based on episodes releasing in the current season. On March 16th, a popular episode called Sandcastles in the Sand came out. It's always been one of my personal favorites. Apparently a lot of people agreed because there were two Flash games based on it. The first was Sandcastle Hassle. This one's great, actually. You're defending your sandcastle from Patrick's attackers. You gather raining sand in a bucket and dump it to build knights that defend your territory. And just listen to this incredible music. If your castle takes damage, you can even rebuild it. I love this one, and could actually play it for a long time. The other one, Sand Wars, isn't as complicated. You hide behind your own sand hills and throw clams at Patrick's to damage them. You have to destroy all of them to win, but you can also rebuild when yours start getting low. The music in this is oddly peaceful for a war anthem. It's entertaining though. Great games for a great episode. But the very next day after Sandcastles in the Sand aired, Toy Store of Doom came out. I remember finding this episode interesting because it was extremely similar to one of my favorite Rugrats episodes. They probably took inspiration from it. But like with Sandcastles in the Sand, it had not one, but two anniversary games. One made by Working Man and one made by This Is Pop. This Is Pop just made a matching game called Toy Store Trial. You can only miss five times before it's game over. They even take a point off for the first one you get wrong. Like, come on, how are you supposed to know? Working Man has a much better one called Toy Barrel Peril. The lights are off, but Patrick has his freaky flashlight eyes that help him see in the dark. The toys are attacking, so you shoot bubbles at them while skateboarding away. You lose battery life if you take damage. The helicopters are the worst because they take a lot of hits to go down and can lead to you being swarmed. It's okay though, a nice tie into the episode. But just two days after Toy Store of Doom came out, an episode called Computer Overload aired on the 19th. This seemed to inspire This Is Pop to create Plankton Pong, a Pong game where you play as Plankton and face off against Karen. That's, uh, really all it is. Great music though. Let's check out another one they made for an episode. A very special one that wasn't Truth or Square. It was called Spongebob vs. The Big One. This was a massive and highly advertised episode which involved Spongebob and friends getting stranded on an island. There, they met Jack Kahuna Laguna and learned how to surf. Like with most Spongebob specials, it was hard to miss with all the advertising it got, but I didn't see it when it first aired. I know, add it to the list. But it also received three games on Nick.com. We'll cover two of them in the next video, but the anniversary one was called Gnarly Rip Curl. You click to make Spongebob ride up a wave, but release the mouse to make him go down. You collect coins for points and avoid jellyfish. Hey, get out of the way, no name. So yeah, compared to Workin' Man, this is Pop like to keep things simple. Another simple one they made was Gary's Great Break. It's a spin on Breakout where you smash jellyfish as Gary to reach your food bowl. It's nice, but Gary's a little blurry compared to the other graphics. But Gary had a much bigger game that wasn't released by either This Is Pop or Workin' Man. It doesn't have the certificate at the end either, but the Spongebob wiki says it's an anniversary game, so I'll take their word for it. This is Gary's Adventure, made by Ham in the Fridge. I know, brilliant company name. They weren't around for long, but they did develop another Spongebob game called Pro Skater, spelled exactly how you expect it to be. But in Gary's Adventure, you play as Gary with his neat little shoes. Spongebob's in a cage in Plankton's underground lair, so you have to reach him. You do this by jumping on platforms, avoiding enemies, and collecting food bowls. You can even collect different shoes for different abilities. This has multiple stages and is far more involved than any of the other ones we've seen. But I do have some issues with it. You float after jumping, so it's hard to land exactly where you want to go. It's hard to explain if you aren't playing the game yourself. You can sometimes fall through platforms without warning, which can easily result in death. And a lot of the time, you can't see what's at the bottom of the screen until you make a jump and fall to your demise. The game also likes to throw a few too many obstacles at you at once, including in the first stage. This leads to incidents like this. 
I respect how much thought went into this, and it's an okay platformer, but it just needed a little more tweaking in my opinion. But speaking of companies that weren't This Is Pop or Workin' Man, Gone Fishing was created by Block.Ink. They made a whole lot of popular web games, including the Santa Ball series. This was a game of Go Fish where you choose to play as either SpongeBob, Squidward, Sandy, or Patrick. It's just Go Fish with the SpongeBob characters, but it's nice to hear their quips whenever they make a move. For some reason, Squidward wouldn't stop killing it whenever I played. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. It's good, but let's check back in on This Is Pop. Here we have Krabby Catch. In this, we have to catch patties, so let's give it a go. Oh, not the green ones, I guess. That's all there is to it. This is similar to a minigame in Sarbacan's Monopoly, but it's a little better because the patties don't fall through your spatula for no reason this time. Though I'm not sure why we're stabbing fully made burgers that are falling from the sky with a spatula. I don't think that's going to do much in the way of stopping them. I'd love to see how the floor looks in this minigame. A similar one is Sandy Chop Chop, love that title, where you jump up as Sandy and use karate moves on falling acorns. And for another simple one, here's Soccer Shootout. You kick a ball into a goal while Patrick tries to defend. It's kind of hard to make it, but there aren't really any stakes to it. So let's visit Workin' Man and see how they're doing. On June 3rd, an episode called Single Cell Anniversary aired. It was a pretty popular one where Plankton tries to get Karen something for their anniversary. It ends with him giving her a song. So that inspired this game, Piano No. The title screen music is an instrumental version of that song. It's hard not to sing along. Hey, look at him go. So you're trying to play a song for your lovely wife and this awful finger is doing its best to stop you. You have to bounce on keys as they light up while avoiding the finger. If you lose, you stink of failure. Unfortunately, this game was a little glitchy for me. Sometimes even the right keys would be marked as wrong. It works most of the time though. Though if the song he's playing is actually represented by the keys he hits, it's probably the worst love song in existence. Ah well, Karen knows he's trying his best. But the day after Single Cell Anniversary aired, another episode called Squid's Visit came out. Once again, two games were based on it. One made by Workin' Man and the other by This Is Pop. The Workin' Man version was called Cook It and Book It. I don't like the way this oven mitt SpongeBob is looking at me. Like in the episode, Squidward is trying to find his vacuum cleaner. Hey, how'd Gary get so big? So you run around your house while avoiding other characters and collecting keys to open doors. You have to grab all the keys in each stage before you can leave, but you also have to find the right door or else you take damage. You're trying to find your vacuum while your casserole cooks so you can't let it burn. Whoa, Gary, settle down there. And it's funny when you lose and the whole house explodes. Took all the SpongeBob characters with it too. I like this one a lot, and you can tell a good deal of effort went into it. It's far more detailed than most of the anniversary games. This is Pop had a good one too, though a bit less complex. In Squidward's Sizzlin' Scare, your casseroles are burning on a bunch of conveyor belts, so you have to put out the fires with your soda dispenser. Yeah, that's a sentence I just uttered. You just gotta be quick about it. It's pretty good. But let's see what else Workin' Man had to offer. This is Pool Party Pooper, a game where you poop in the pool. No, I'm just kidding. But for some reason, you're responsible for applying sunscreen to a group of fish. Anchovies are burning. Okay, what is it with Spongebob Flash games and always referring to every type of fish as anchovies? This is what anchovies look like. Gosh, get it right. As if that weren't enough, Patrick is in the mood for mischief. Misspelling aside, that is an extremely ominous sentence. So these fish on rafts are burning in the sun, so you have to run to a counter filled with sunscreen to cool them off. But Patrick is a shark and he wants to body slam them. To appease him, you have to run to this other counter to collect food and throw it at him. This is a continual cycle. You have to keep getting sunscreen because you can run out too. And it's really funny when a fish burns because they become realistically cooked. I really like this one. Good job, working man. Another one is Elbow Grease Scrub Down, which has some very unique visuals. Once again, Patrick is in the mood for mischief. SpongeBob takes the form of a realistic sponge and has to clean a messy floor while a plushie of Patrick makes a mess through various creative means. Even a plushie Gary comes in. You have to keep yourself wet by jumping in a bucket whenever you start to dry. If things get too messy, it's game over. Also watch out for gum. They'll make you stick to the floor. This game is both really creative and satisfying. Kinda easy, but a good time altogether. Now here's Fiery Tracks of Fury. 
This utilizes the roller coaster from the episode Roller Cowards. As SpongeBob and Patrick, you ride on a roller coaster and jump over holes in the track while collecting tickets, which used to be cotton candy, and balloons. But watch out for the fiery fist of pain that will try to smash you. It breaks holes in the track that you have to jump over. This was actually awarded Game of the Year on Nick.com, and that makes sense because it's a lot of fun. This later received an updated version in 2013, but the original is good enough. I think the difficulty is also just right. Not too easy, but not too hard. Much different from a certain other Flash game about riding a roller coaster. Nope, not gonna think about it, never touching that again. But speaking of games based on episodes, July 17th saw the release of To Square Pants or Not To Square Pants, an episode where Spongebob changes his recognizable square pants to round pants. How inconceivable. Clearly such an act requires immortalization in the form of a Flash game. This is Round Pants Runaround, made by This Is Pop. But actually, this opposes the idea of Spongebob wearing round pants, because you have to avoid them and collect square pants. You can also pee yourself. What, they make gold underwear. They walked right into that one. Really all there is to it. You just run around in circles and pee. But this episode marked the beginning of a marathon called the Ultimate Spongebob Sponge Bash. During this, 12 new episodes would air. Among the 10 that aired on the 19th, we had No Hat for Pat, Chum Bucket Supreme, and Overbooked. There would be a total of five anniversary games made for these three episodes. To start off, in honor of No Hat for Pat, this is Pop made Patrick's Hat Trick. You click to raise yourself up a spout of water and collect Krusty Krab hats, but you take damage from Chum Bucket ones. I mean, it's about Patrick, and it's about hats. What else do they need to adapt No Hat for Pat? This is Pop also released Chum is Fum based on Chum Bucket Supreme. And yeah, we all know that's literally the best restaurant slogan ever conceived. But fittingly enough, the music is incredible. This is Pop never held back with their soundtracks. But in this, you're a steadily increasing line of customers that's collecting chum sticks. Your line gets longer and it can't touch itself, so you have to navigate carefully to collect more. It's really entertaining, actually. You have to get really creative to avoid having the line overlap. Very basic, but very good. Now on the other hand, Workin' Man made a few more detailed ones. All for the same episode, overbooked. Let me tell you, if there was one Spongebob episode that perfectly explained my life, it would probably be rock bottom, but overbooked is a close second. Sometimes I wish I could clone myself to do more than one thing at a time. But Working Man must have really liked this episode. This first game is called Krabs Astro Lab. Mr. Krabs is trying to build a telescope to watch a comet. You have to find the right pieces to fit into each outline, even rotating a few to make them work. It's an enjoyable one, with a good difficulty balance. Though when you lose, you find out the comet is actually Patrick. Must be during his stage in Creature from the Krusty Krab. Now here's Sandy Sponge Stacker. Love the music in this one. Gary is up in a tree, so it's up to you to clone Spongebob a countless number of times so you can stack them up and reach him. You have to balance them perfectly on top of one another so your tower doesn't topple, but also so you aren't blocked by obstacles such as tree branches. It's a lot harder than it seems, especially since it's easy to completely corner yourself. That can really ruin your run. The animation is really good in this, and I like the vibrant feel, but I wish it wasn't so easy to lose it all because of one mistake. But the last overbooked game is by far the most... interesting of them all. This is Tasty Pastry Party. Now if you're expecting a wholesome My Little Pony styled cooking game from that title, kill those expectations right now, because this is anything but. It doesn't even lie to you about its vibe. The menu screen keeps glitching out with TV static. It's a cool effect, but it makes it hard to read the instructions. Patrick looks absolutely out of his mind. So for his birthday, he wants a very specific cake with unconventional ingredients. You have to interpret which ingredient from your shelf to add based on how he describes it. For example, add jellyfish if he asks for something shocking. Now as you can see, all of your ingredient options are... usually inedible. And in case you're wondering, yes, you do cook up this kitten for him. You can even see its fur as part of the cake once you use it. This is an official Spongebob game where you brutally bake a kitten alive and feed it to Patrick. Working man, why? And when you put this rat in, it squeaks in agony. 
What I find really funny is whenever you get an ingredient wrong, he vomits. As if he's throwing up from whatever you put in and not all the other strange things he asked for. You know what? I like it. It's dark, it's nasty, but it's really fun. Let's just hope this is the last cat murdering we see in a Spongebob game. So far, this and PC Battle for Bikini Bottom brings Spongebob's cat kill count to two. So let's keep going with Working Man. Here's Gazuntite Geyser. Spongebob has done it again. He's fallen into a pit filled with lava-spewing geysers. Ugh, again? Seriously, Spongebob. Getting real sick of this. So in a very strange mechanic, you're tickling Spongebob's nose with a feather duster to make him sneeze so he bounces over geysers before they shoot lava out. You also have to outrun this oncoming lava flow. You get increasingly burned the more damage you take, but fire extinguishers turn you back to normal. It also keeps track of your distance, and sometimes the spewing lava can actually help. This one's extremely unique, and I like it. They really thought outside the box with this one. Now here's Invasive Voyage, based on the episode Squidtastic Voyage. The pun isn't lost on me either. Squidward has swallowed a bunch of clarinet reeds. Um, I'm pretty sure he only swallowed one. How would he even swallow a bunch? That would have to be deliberate. Unless he fell onto a shelf with them and looked up when his mouth was open or something. So as Spongebob and Patrick, you fly a ship into his mouth. He looks way too happy about this. You have to shoot bubbles and collect the reeds. Whenever you shoot a bubble, he burps. <coughs> Honestly, I had to turn the volume off for this one. It got a little overbearing. Even my immature sense of humor has its limits. It's an okay shooter game, though. I really like how everything is animated here. Now here's Jelly Jumpin' Jamboree. But actually, Jelly Fallin' Jamboree would be a more fitting title. You do more of that than jumping. You jump or fall from one giant jellyfish to another while avoiding hooks. Falling on bubbles gives you a little bounce. You collect extra lives and bonuses while trying to keep yourself afloat. It's addicting. And it's okay when you lose, because Spongebob and Patrick look like they're having fun on those hooks anyway. The good ending. Now here's Cash Crab. You're a crab, and you're getting cash. Mr. Krabs needs his money now. For some reason, a bunch of sea turtles are swimming around with bags of money on their backs. Now you have to bounce Krabby Patties up to them to knock the money off, then catch it and you're safe. Careful, Mr. Krabs, you know they're in danger, don't you? But this is all right. Now here's No Train, No Gain. What are you waving at? You're on a train and bandits are trying to derail it. Rather than having separate controls, you move the mouse up and click when there's a visible up arrow to jump, and you do the same to throw horseshoes down at the bandits below you. You collect horseshoes and throw them, knocking all these evil fish off their seahorses. Then you move to the next cart and repeat the process. It's both amusing and kind of easy for me. My great ancestor, Lucky Lasso One, would be so proud. But now let's move on to the spooky time of the year. We had a few scary games come out to get in the Halloween spirit, so let's check out some of them. This is Monster Mashup. My regular watchers are probably sick of seeing it since I covered it in both of my fighting games videos, but we have to commit to this anniversary run-through. You're a monstrous version of Patrick called Patrick the Great facing off against the Mechanical Plankton. Maybe this is Patrick after he didn't get any Valentine's Day gifts. Or Halloween candy, that works too. You use the keyboard to dodge attacks from Plankton the Mechanical while also jabbing and hooking to the left and right. It's kind of like Punch-Out, but with only one opponent. Your health doesn't regenerate from round to round, so you just keep going till you drop. It's alright, but Bikini Bottom Bust-Up is a more expansive version of the same concept. The other spooky working man game was Ghostly Gold Grab. <laughs> How's that for an intro? The instructions are in the form of a letter from the Flying Dutchman, so he tells you not to do things you're actually supposed to do. Wow, the Dutchman ship got a lot smaller since we last saw it in Deck Dash. The ship acts as a seesaw to launch Spongebob and Patrick into doubloons while avoiding these ghost guys. But you can collect ghostly doubloons to activate ghostly powers and defeat them. There's no music, so you just listen to the sound of the creaking ship the entire time. <laughs> It's decent, but this is Pop also had a ghostly themed game this year. This is Ghost Slayer, a game where you run around, collect candy corn, and throw bubbles at ghosts. Neat. The music really sets the tone.
Oh, this is Pop, how we love your musical capabilities. But two games that came out at the same time in October weren't actually Halloween-themed. Both were made by This Is Pop. This is Robot Ruckus. You control Sandy and throw horseshoes at an army of Plankton's robots. Wow, horseshoes are a seriously potent weapon in SpongeBob Flash games. Right up there with bubbles. Those are the robots from Chimps Ahoy, by the way. Sea Stampede came out at the same time as this. In it, you're SpongeBob and you're driving. Oh no, who let him behind the wheel? You move in with the mouse and dodge Plankton's relatives, who seem to have gotten a lot bigger. Jeez, does nobody get gifts on Valentine's Day anymore? You have a lot of freedom with the mouse movement, so it can be fun to just fly around the screen. It's worth giving a shot. Now here's Skater Sponge. Spelled incorrectly, though. You could learn a thing or two from Ham in the Fridge. As usual, the music's awesome. It's pretty hard, though. You have to jump to skate over obstacles, but you have to time them perfectly to stick the landing. I may be good at throwing horseshoes, but skateboarding is not my forte. My child self that wanted to be like Bart Simpson would be so disappointed. Now here's Walks to Plank. I assume it's meant to be read as SpongeBob SquarePants Walks to Plank. The plank in question being a series of wooden planks. You run across a bunch of docks while avoiding holes and jumping from one to the other to collect Krabby Patties. Listen to this one. I feel like This Is Pop could make the act of boiling water sound awesome with its background music. But let's break from them for now. We still have four Working Man games to get through. Then we'll close it up with four This Is Pops. To continue, here's Socking Garden Saga, based on the episode Dear Vikings. The Vikings want to catapult Squidward away, so you have to please them by finding socks they're looking for. You dig through the dump collecting garbage and opening chests, then bringing certain socks back to Gordon. If he doesn't like the color or pattern, he'll tell you such, so you have to deduce which sock he's looking for by trial and error. While I like it and admit it's a unique concept, it took me a bit to figure out what I was supposed to do. I kept thinking he told me what sock he wanted, but I clicked past it. But once you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy and you can have a good time with it. There are a lot of clocks to give you more time, so you don't have to worry too much about running out. Just watch out for the rats with air bubbles. Sandy needs to stop inviting her friends down here. So now let's get to one of my favorites. This one is called SpongeBob Stinky Swagger. Based on the episode Something Smells, SpongeBob had his atrocious Sunday, so now his breath stinks. And yet, he must say hello to everyone in Bikini Bottom. This leads to mass murder. You have to keep eating sundaes to keep your breath nasty, but avoid breath mints. Those are bad and will give you good smelling breath. And who wants that? Jeez, that guy just exploded! We literally blew a guy up! This game requires you to go around and murder as many citizens as you possibly can. Okay, working man. First you make me bake a realistic cat into a cake, now this? How sickening. But I really like this one, especially with how creative they get with the death animations. If you let too many citizens live, they come over to beat you up. But you can probably kill them all easily by just opening your mouth. So let's move on to Tidy Whitey Tumble. This is one where you have to make Spongebob fly as far as possible. You use a realistic hand to pull on his underwear and send him flying. Then you see how far he can go. You can even bounce off of obstacles and burp to give yourself a boost. <laughs> What was with all these games and burping? But because of this, it isn't hard to get really far, though it can be funny to hit obstacles too. The wooden boats break into pieces, and it's really hilarious to knock Karen over. I like it. But now we've reached the final five games of the anniversary. Since December marks the end of the year, I thought it fitting to have five winter-themed games be the last few we cover. This next one will be the last Workin' Man game we cover for now, but don't worry. We'll get very used to them as this series goes on. 
This is Sub-Zero Hero. Originally, this game had an advertisement for Jingle Brawl that gave you a code to unlock training mode. You can tell the start of the Super Brawl series was a very serious event in 2009. But in this, we're stuck inside a freezer once again, and this isn't even related to Truth or Square. To avoid freezing, you jump over snowballs while collecting hot chocolate and finding heat vents. You're slowly covered in ice as time goes by, so you better find heat to melt it off. When you get close to freezing, the screen turns red and an alarm goes off until you heat up. Also look out for falling icicles. And all things considered, this is a pretty big freezer. Must be on the Flying Dutchman ship. So that's gonna do it for Working Man until part 2. Then we'll look at the non-anniversary games they made. But in the meantime, we still have four wintry This Is Pop games to look at. Here's Bikini Bottom Big Jump. You're ice skating down a slope and trying to jump as far as you can go. You can even click to boost yourself. You don't even have to burp this time. So yeah, it's another one where you try to go as far as you can. I tried to see how high I could go, but I don't think I'll be reaching the surface of the ocean anytime soon. Probably frozen anyway. But thankfully, there's no abominable snowman that chases you down the hill. Now here's SpongeBob Snow Shredder, where you snowboard down a hill and try to make it through a series of flags. It's a lot harder than it sounds. But I guess with these simple concepts, you really have to amp up the difficulty. <laughs> Let's wrap up with two games we've looked at before, but with a few new notes to add this time. To start, this is Winter Runderland. The music is reused from Atlantis Squarepantis Square Off. You run and leap from building to building while looking at SpongeBob's gargantuan gaping mouth. You rack up points with every building you jump to. Yeah, by now you could tell this is Pop just wanted to get these weekly games over with. But for a little exploit, you can actually just jump on the same building repeatedly and keep gaining points. That's really all there is to say. And I still say it should be called Winter Jumperland instead of Runderland. And to close out, let's look at Squidward's Sneak Peek. Once again, the music is reused from Square Off. <laughs> Everything is blurry except for you, but you have to sneak over to Squidward and steal his present. Whenever he turns around, you have to stop sneaking and wait for him to turn back before you resume. Now I made a mistake when I looked at this in my Christmas video. I said that Gary was here for no real reason, but actually, you're racing him. If he gets to the present before you, you lose. This is to keep you from just standing still for too long. Now this was an easy oversight to make, because as long as you're trying to win, Gary will never beat you. It really just seems like he moves with you. But aside from all that, this is okay. Not too involved, but good enough. And that's going to do it for our Spongebob Anniversary Extravaganza. Now that was a lot to get through. And it still isn't even all the games that came out in 2009. But it was a great showcasing for what Working Man could do, and really helped to fill Nick.com with Spongebob games to keep fans interested. This event was a great way to celebrate Spongebob's 10-year anniversary. While most of the games were basic, they were all enjoyable in their own rights, and some went on to leave a lasting impact in Spongebob's web game history. Fiery Tracks of Fury, Love Hurts, Chum is Fum, and a good few others are still beloved by many. This was a nice period to relive, and I'm glad I was able to go through all of these. Now I have to go lay down and rest after reviewing 55 Spongebob Flash games in a row. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.